Shalom Aleichem. My name is Yoshua Weinstein, and I'm involved over here by URA, working together with Rabbi Mintz on the various different URA Kirov programs and projects that we're involved with throughout the year. Baruch Hashem, URA today is involved with working with over 2,000 families from a very wide background. And these families are coming from throughout the country, and really today from throughout the world, that we are involved with servicing. Um, what I would like to share with you is particularly in how URA takes a personal interest in the families that we're involved with an interest in making sure that these families have the tools that are needed to celebrate the Jewish holidays that we have throughout the year. The way Rabbi Mintz began years ago was is that Rabbi Mintz took a child, he put him for the first time in Jewish day school. When he put this child into Jewish day school, Rabbi Mintz wanted to make sure that all the other children in day school would have, when that first you know, big yunt of the year would come along, they would have that little an esrog to use for the first time. Rabbi Mintz was concerned. This family, this boy, who's now going to Yeshiva, for the first time is not going to have a little of an esrog. His parents don't know about this. So by Mintz, when he bought a little of an esrog for his own family, he went ahead and additionally picked up another set for this child that he was sending to Yeshiva. And as things have grown over 35 years, now, thank God, Baruch Hashem, we are sending out FedEx from our office, 2,000 sets of love and esrog to families from throughout the country. And just imagine that feeling that there is for the first time, that a family, you know, opens up their front door and sees that FedEx package that comes personally from Rabbi Mintz and from their friends at Ura with that rule of an Esro that they've never seen before in their lives. And they say, you know, what is this? And the child explains to them, we learned about rule of an Esro in school. And Rabbi Mintz, Ura, has sent us a rule of an Esro to be able to appreciate and to celebrate the holiday. Even though, like, you leave Ura, like, after summer, you don't really, like, leave them. You're still, like, one big family. Like, during the year, every single Chag, like, fan book, like, Sukkot, you go, like, a Lulav and, like, a Trog, and, like, for Purim, you go, like, a huge, like, Mishloch Mano from them. And, like, no matter what, you're still always part of Ura, even though you're not there. And, um, they send us packages uh, for every holiday. Um, for instance, uh, Sukkot, they sent us a Lulav and a Trog. Um, I think Ura was wonderful because they send us stuff like uh, for each Jewish holiday. To include the entire family, I mean, thought, wait a minute, you know, all the other children have sukkahs at home. Where is this, you know, child going to get a sukkah from? So what I mean did was, is that when he would go ahead and he would build sukkahs for, you know, his own family, his own children, his own you know, grandchildren, they would have sukkahs, right? So he would go ahead and he would, um, you know, buy and build and send some of the bachrams, some of the volunteers to go ahead and build sukkahs. Baruch Hashem at this point, years later, it's a tremendous army of people that are involved in going throughout in the New York tri-state area, but really there we have, you know, sukkahs that we ship throughout the country, and we're sending out sukkahs to, you know, many, many families that never would have had a sukkah before, a zolcha to be able to have for themselves a sukkah for the first time, that they're able to use, and they use it for years to come. Uh, Uras awarded us with a sukkah. Um, so we, we got to experience our very first Sukkot uh, in a sukkah. Uh, I think we were the only sukkah in 40 square miles. So uh, it was really exciting and uh, my sons got a lot out of it. When it comes to Purim, Purim is a young tiff, of course, that we all enjoy. Everybody gets dressed up in Purim. Everybody enjoys Purim. But you know what? If you're a child in Yeshiva for the first time, or if your family is not so familiar with Purim, Purim is just not the same as it is for those who are part of our community already. And so therefore, what Rabbi Mintz would do is, is he would make a Purim Suda, a beautiful celebration with singing and dancing and, and, and entertainment and things for, uh, for the families that he's involved with. Hi, my name is Sviar I've been with Ura for over seven years, working a lot with the tuitions. In the past seven years, things have changed greatly. When Chaim Mintz first started Ura, he knew every student and he kept up with every student and the family. Now we're a lot bigger, but we try very hard to give the same personal attention to every student that we're helping. But we have to do it in a little different way. The first thing is we're, we have to, we're involved in encouraging parents to send their children to a Jewish school. But most Uru Afirs will have people there speaking to the parents, you know, to fill out the parents, to see if they'll be interested in sending the kid to Jewish schools, to see what the reservations are about why they don't want to send the kid to Jewish schools. And we try to address the reservations. The other thing is, unfortunately today, because of assimilation rate, it takes a lot of time sometimes to check out is a child really Jewish or not. The third thing we have to do is we have to find the right school. We have to find a school that the child will do well in. We have to find a school that the child will have friends, the child will be happy. 
we have to find a school that the parents will be happy with, and that takes a lot of time. We had one family that we worked on for two, three years to find them the right school. Bar Hashem, this year we found them the right school and they're doing well. The parents went down to the school, they were very impressed by the principal, they sent the kids there, the kids are doing great, the kids love the school, the parents love the school, and since then, the parents started keeping Shabbos. And we decided that's it. We're flipping the coin and we cancelled public school, we pulled all our kids out, and through the help of Aura and their programs, we were able to get the kids into Shalom Torah, such an atlas when they come home from school and they're singing the Jewish songs and they're, you know, I'm sitting at home and homework is math, English, Hummus and Tehillim. Now in order to give the same special attention that Rabbi Mintz gave to every student when Uru was a small organization, we started two camps, Boy Zone and Girl Zone. We encourage all the students to go to the camp. Every kid in camp gets what's called a Torah mate, a big brother, a big sister to keep up with them. And that is how we know what's going on with every child and we can give them the same personal attention that Rabbi Mintz always gave the children years ago when Ura first started. Ura has a bunch of camps geared to be Makariv kids. We have Boy Zone, Girl Zone, Teen Zone, Discover You, all to encourage kids to become more in touch with their heritage. Hi, my name is Yuval Deslasi and I went to Girl Zone for the past three years since summer 2007. And Girl Zone is seriously one of the biggest parts of my life. It's always a struggle. What do we do to get these kids to come to our camps? But we have a tremendous amount of things that we offer them. We have beautiful grounds. We have a tremendous amount of activities that a lot of other camps don't have and we're able to give them as horseback riding, bumper boats, zip line, um, major water slides, indoor, outdoor heated pools, Xbox room, game room, and a lot of our program is outstanding. Our staff is warm, caring, and it's an unbelievable camp with a tremendous amount of opportunity for these kids. The head staff there is like amazing. Rabbi Davinowitz, like, I used to think drag going to like Shayer was like a whole big drag. Like, it's really not. He's so amazing. And Mrs. Adar, she always puts so much effort into Girl Zone with like all her spirit. That's what like really makes Girl Zone. And it's the best camp ever. Um, we can't ask for more. It's like, it's home. It's it. It's home. It's all we need. They really ever have that opportunity of seeing what a real Ben Yeshiva, Ben Torah, or a Basi Yisrael is really all about. And here for four weeks, they live in a bunk together with them, they sit with them in, they sit with them in davening, they sit with them in a dining room, they daven with them, and they just spend time with them and they have a tremendous, a good time and an exciting time together with a true Ben Torah, true Basi Yisrael, they see what it means living a Jewish life. But our goal is the follow-up throughout the year. We have a Torah Mate program, we have trips that we do every Cholamoid. We take them on a trip and they get together with their staff again. We have a Shabbaton in the middle of the year, both for the boys and for the girls. It's not just for the summer. We have Shabbatons in hotel and camp. We have Hanukkah parties, Sukkot trips, um, Pesach trips. We go to Six Flags in the Rocket City. And in Ur, we have amazing Shabbatons. We just finished in the Hanukkah Shabbaton, actually. It was so fun. We saw our friends. We ate amazing food. We did so much. We have the Shabbat Zone, which is a Shabbos house for the girls. Whenever they want to keep Shabbos and they want to get away from their surroundings, they could come and spend time with the staff and keep a Shabbos throughout the year. Um, also, they have Shabbat Zone every two Shabbats of the month. And Shabbat morning, when you wake up, you feel different. You feel like you feel it's Shabbat and you get all dressed up and it's all fancy. And dancing and singing together is amazing. And on top of that, we have the Torah May program which they could, they learn with them and they actually get miles and they get rewards for the amount they learn and that is a tremendous tool for these kids that either are very little exposed or are unexposed at all to learn about Torah and mitzvahs and learn about Yiddishkeit. It's a wonderful program where you learn Torah with your Chavrusa and it is amazing, we, we steig away we uh, had the opportunity to uh, have a summer with Ura, um, and my sons walked away with, with so much um, uh, that they learned throughout the summer. Um, they've taught me a lot of things myself. After I went to Girls' Zone, I started buying more skirts and more skirts, and it just I realized that it, it could look nice, 
and my closet is like full of skirts now, and it's just because of girls. My son Brian was awarded to fill in at URA. Um, he was so committed to it and so dedicated to that, and URA got to see um, my son's potential. Hi, my name is Mordechai Beer. I'm the Tormates coordinator for URA, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Tormates program. In the Tormates program, we set up a chabrushashat, or a study partnership, between a Torah knowledgeable person together with a less connected individual. Someone who hasn't had the privilege to learn Torah, someone who is less connected to a Jewish heritage. And the goal of the program is, of course, to bring that person closer to a Jewish heritage, to experience Torah learning. We wanted our daughter to learn about her Jewish heritage, and we had heard about Ura, and they, had, they sent someone, a young lady, who comes every week to our house, and Natalie and she tell stories and they work together and do crafts and my daughter absolutely loves it. She looks forward for her to come every week and um, which was wonderful for my husband and I to see. Uh, it's great that she's getting this kind of new background that she never really was exposed to before. And since then we have been learning for over a year. I'd like to tell you a little story about one of our uh, tour mates, um, Harusas. Uh, we'll call him Robert. Robert originally wasn't interested in learning. It actually was his wife that pressed him to contact us. And she did, and we set up a starting partnership with Robert and one of our volunteers. It turned out that Robert hit it off tremendously with, with our volunteer. And Robert just loved learning uh, to the extent that each week he just would uh, eagerly await the next week. I, after a short time of this, I approached him and I asked him, Robert, perhaps you're interested in sending your children to a Jewish school. Again, Robert was hesitant once again, and he said, I don't think it's for me. Um, I want my kids to have a good secular education. But after a little prodding, um, I was successful, Baruch Hashem. And today, his kids are in a Jewish school. And to tell you the truth, he can't stop thanking me uh, for that little prodding, that little encouragement that I gave him. Uh, he tells me that, um, uh, that there's nothing like hearing his children say over the lessons to him, and, and now they even have a Shabbos table uh, to boot. But the story goes further. Last year, by our, we had a Shabbos with Ur. That means we have actually a, a retreat, a weekend retreat uh, in a hotel in which all the Torah mates gathered together. Robert got up in front of the audience, and the audience was composed of hundreds of people. And he got up and he said, I'd like you all to know that I lost my job this past week. I remember the audience was stunned by such a proclamation. But he went on to say, normally I would have gone into a total panic. After all, how am I gonna provide for my children? Uh, where are we gonna get our next meal? How are we gonna live? But through Ura and through Torah I learned that there's nothing to worry about. I learned that Hashem is gonna take care of everything. I realized that I don't have control. I realize that this comes from a higher, it, it really does come from a higher level, and I, I truly believe that. And after I made that decision to say, it is what it is, <laughs> I don't write the law, you know what, I don't have any stress anymore. Hi, my name is Avram Biederman, and um, I've been helping Ura run Torah Spot since we started just over a year ago. We view this as a place that's going to be a home away from home for Jews trying to learn more about Yiddishkeit. Right now we have a program every Tuesday night. It's a lecture, but it's far more than a lecture. It begins with people coming together, there are refreshments, it's a very nice, welcoming environment. And Ura's philosophy in general has been to help people at every stage of observance and every stage of education, with people that are just starting to learn about, reconnect with Yiddishkeit, people that have been from for many years, to enhance their, their knowledge of Yiddishkeit and Torah. And Torah Spot was designed to help further that. People, we have um, anywhere from 30 to nearly 50 people every Tuesday night. Coming together, we sit, we schmooze, it's one-on-one -on -one before people talk with each other, people speak with my wife, with myself, with the other volunteers that come. All sorts of issues, all sorts of questions about Judaism, about Torah. Rabbi Mintz gives a, a beautiful, wonderful lecture every week. 
and then they could ask questions on any topic about anything about Yiddishkeit that they'd like to ask. Torah Spot is uh, a unique opportunity for a wide range of uh, Jews from people who are looking to reattach themselves to Judaism to uh, people who need some reinforcement or even people who have been Torah observant Jews. It's, uh, it's a well um, mixed group of people who interact very nicely with the Rabbanim. Uh, Rabbi Mintz has been an inspiration to all of us. He's, his style is low key, but he's firm in his beliefs. He's not trying to beat anybody over, over the head. Like he says, he's not trying to make anybody religious, but he does give you the facts. And the facts are according to the Torah way. And he's, um, he's informative, he's interesting, uh, interesting and uh, each week he, um, he picks up from the week before, so you're not in, in a big void. And uh, he also started something several weeks ago, which I think is, is nice. Uh, before he gives his uh, prepared share, he, um, he goes over a few halakas. And, and of course, at the end of the session, it's wide open for discussion. And it's inspiring because uh, for myself, um, I see people reattaching themselves. Uh, I see people, even when I'm on the street, I hear people talking to other people about becoming kosher, or how do I kosher. The things that we hear is how wonderful and warm an environment it is. It's not threatening, it's very casual, comfortable chairs, very modern decor, it's welcoming. I think another major factor is the approach. Uh, it's an attractive location. Uh, they did a beautiful job, meaning Ur, in setting up the, uh, the Young Israel of Elfinville's um, Simco Hall, which is now Ur's uh, place where we learn. And it's besides being clean and, and stylish and bright, uh, there's a wonderful uh, uh, open smorgasbord, sometimes with hot food, sometimes, you know, always with cold food, sometimes with hot food. People schmooze before, after. It's, uh, it's an enticing atmosphere. And the nicest part about it is it's always welcome. You're always welcome and you always feel that you're part of the cloud.